Hi, this is Doug Girard, developer of iAnalyze Racing, and we're going to talk about the Data Source tab, which is the very first tab that iAnalyze opens up to when you open the product. And we're also going to cover the different ways that you can open and access data. Now, just very quickly, let's go over the three different types of data sources. Uh, we have a map source, a data source, and a reference source. Uh, you'll often hear me s interchange the term source and lap, and they really mean the same thing. So when I say map source or map lap, I'm really talking about the same thing, and uh, the same thing with a data source or data lap or reference lap uh, or reference source. And starting with the map source, what the map source is, is it basically a, it is the lap that you choose to say, this is what I want my track to look like. Track maps are generated versus via a technique known as dead reckoning, which takes your current position, heading, and velocity, and predicts what your next position, heading, velocity is going to be. And as we get that data in from my analyze racing, we can project a, or uh, for, for my racing, we can project what your track path, what your path has been, and that gives us a track map. And if you spin, go off course, all those things can affect what the map looks like. But we'll open a data session here. Now let's talk about a number of different ways you can get at data. First off, easiest way is if you've already collected it and it's one you want to go through, you can collect, select the uh, one from the most recently used settings here, and it will automatically load it and fill it in. Notice that the other two were empty. When I analyze racing sees that those are empty and says, well, you just opened a data source. You probably want those filled in with data and it'll fill those in automatically with the ones that you've just selected. Now, that's the quickest and easy way to, to get data. Now, another way is that you can say, hey, I want to browse the data and browsing the data opens up the file explorer that you're familiar with just like any other Windows program and you can load different data from different tracks. If you look over here on the, on the left hand side of the track you can see under the I analyze racing data uh, um, there's a whole bunch of different cars listed and underneath each car is the different tracks and under each track is the different configurations that you've been to. Now we're at the Okinawa short course, so we can look here and see what these data, the, uh, these data files are. And we can say, pick one of these and say, let's open that up and it will load it up. Now it will leave the map source and the reference source the same because they're already filled in and only update this one. Now, of course, it is also available here in the frequently used list, so we can switch to that if we'd like or we can just switch back to where we were just at. Now two really neat tools, or I think they're neat tools, are the driver's best and other's best uh, shortcuts. And if you have a track loaded here, already loaded, you can click on driver's best. And what it will do is it will go out and if it's seen a, a better lap, it will check the file, it will check through your hard disk to see if it's still there. If it is, it will load that session and it will bring it up. And so apparently this 107.582 is my best lap. Now the nice thing is you could also do this with others best lap. And I just did this on the reference source. And you can see that it's going to bring up a lap. It loads another session and here's a guy. Uh, we have the data for, uh, from this Don Matthews, who set a lap at 104.357. who's way faster than I am. Uh, so those are kind of tool, two shortcuts that are very useful for loading, uh, for loading data. And finally, and perhaps one of the most, or what I hope is going to be one of a frequently used feature, is the online uh, uh, button. And that's is another way that you can browse the online database of laps and, and setups that folks have shared. And pretty simple to use. You've got a drop down list listing all of the tracks uh, that we have data for um, from Okiyama to Road America. Uh, it automatically, or by default, it will uh, go to the track that you're at um, and update the configurations for what you have here. So you can just quickly just jump into the cars that you want. And interesting, we have two cars here. You could also select which cars you want to look for, for laps for. If you're in uh, uh, the, a series where you have the Roadster and the Cup, you probably want to look at both of them. So you just click on, just single clicking on them will highlight them. And once you've got all these options filled in, you click Find Laps, it goes up to the database and then, and then lists all of the laps that it has from fastest to slowest by session driver. Now, the laps that get uploaded to iAnalyze Racing are only laps that drivers in iAnalyze Racing have set. So it has all of the data. So we can pick one of these particular ones. Um, and the 107.582, I think, is my lap. But we'll say we're, we're going to grab that one. 
and we can if we'll click on that and we say okay you'll notice down here it goes it downloads it brings up the save file dialog and says hey where do you want to save that lists the um, the, it gives it a default file name of the track name and what the lap time was and stores it in if you look at the top it'll under the iAnalyze Racing Directory the car name track and the configuration and you can click save and it will save it out and it will load it right up for you and you can see that this in fact is my lap that we've looked at so we're gonna uh, change this to a different session here Let's pick this one because it's not loaded. There we go. Um, oops, I didn't want that one. I wanted another one. Let's do this one. There we go. So we have two different things here. So we have the three different um, sessions are being compared here. Now, one of the other things, that the other tools that you'll see offered here or the other buttons that you can click on to do fun things with on the data source page is that each lap, if it's one of your laps, has a... Uh, a, a setup, a save setup for this lap button, or an export data lap with this setup. So if you only really want to save the one particular lap that you that you've done, you can and you want to get rid of all the files because some of these can get pretty big. You can kind of see here. Well, these are these are just the lap files, um, but if we look at all files, we can kind of see that hey, we're getting eight nine megs uh, just for a 15 30 minute session. Uh, those can add up, and if you're running low on disk space, maybe you just want to save the individual lap. Uh, that's of interest to you and you just select that lap and you can say give it a name and you can save it out it'll warn you that if you want to replace it. and it will it, it will just save out that particular lap for you so that you could either send it if you have friends that you want to send that lap to but you don't want to share it for some reason on, on, on the website or if it's just interesting and, and you want to send it to someone you can send that much smaller lap instead of the great big data file um, the other neat thing is that if you're in an open session and you're tuning your setup, um, every lap you run, your setup is saved. So every complete lap that you do, when you complete that lap, it saves your setup so that you can always return to a setup that you've done. And that's what the Save Setup button does. And it, and it, what it will do, it will say, okay, here's the setup. It will give it a name, Okiyama, lap time, and give it what the short lap time is, and offer to save it in the iRacing setups directory for the particular car that you're running. And you can save that out. Now you have that available to you in iRacing. So if you had iRacing running, you could be looking at that as well. Uh, those are the pretty. Those are the the, the tools that. Uh, are available on the data sources tab and we've kind of talked about what a map lap is kind of showed you how you can flip the map we've looked at different ways you can open data sources and reference sources and now we'll just get an understanding of what's the difference between a data source and a reference source well there's really not much it's just that the and the main difference really ends up being how it gets displayed and to demonstrate that we'll go to the driver tab and you'll notice we have two different color traces here. And you'll also notice over here in the in the in the track map here, over on the right hand side, there's a red and a blue car, or a red and blue dot with a number in it. And those actually represent the red one uh, represents the, the reference car, and the blue one represents the data car. And basically what that means is is that the data car is, is if both cars were at the start and finish line at the same exact time. This is where they would be based on how they've driven lap to that position on the racetrack. You'll notice that all of our graphs are in travel and in terms of either feet or meters, depending upon if you're in metric or standard mode. And that way you could always have a comparison of what's happening where on the individual racetrack. And so by selecting those laps, you're able to generate a bunch of data and take a look at uh, how the reference lap performs to the um, uh, data lap and you'll notice up here we have blue and red for what if you look on the left hand side for the speed graph and if we come here you can look we go to miles per hour there's speed and the data is the blue graph and the reference is the red graph and you can change these colors to whatever you want and when you make that change the red speed color for a reference lap will always be the color that you pick so no matter where i look at speed now in the program if i'm looking at the, the reference lap it's going to be red uh, one nice thing here is you can on the uh, on the drivers tab is that you can also click on the rotate button here to bring in 
to put the different plots in in better resolution. So for example, you have the pedals and the speed down here now, and you've rotated the steering input between the two different uh, laps uh, as well. Now, one of the neat graphs that you have, or interesting graphs that provide you lots of data quickly, is the time gain loss graph. And that's up here at the top. And you can kind of see it goes green, and then goes red, then goes green, and goes red. Well, what this is doing is it's comparing your data lap to your reference lap to figure out if the data lap car is at 200 feet on the racetrack. Where's the reference lap car at that uh, at, at that that same time? And if the if the reference lap car is farther down the track, it figures out, well, what time was it at 200 feet? And figures out for each position on the racetrack whether the race car was ahead or behind and plots that for you to give you an idea of how much time you're gaining and losing um, as you go through comparing the two laps. In this case, the green shows where the data lap the race car is ahead and if you look at the track map on the right hand side with the cur two, two car dots displayed there you'll notice that the blue is ahead and the blue is the data lap um, car and you'll notice that as we get into this corner here we start to lose time and then as we go down the straightaway for whatever reason I'm losing time getting into the corner okay and as we get into the corner well I make it back up in the next one and then in the, the next two series of right-handers I lose lose a lot of time and then pick a little of it back up as we head back onto the main straight and so that you can see rather quickly that I did some things faster to start with but that I lost all that time and lost even more in this part of the track and at the end I was this far behind and if you can see the reference car actually finishes and stops a little early because it's a second or two uh, ahead of us at the start finish until the until your data card catches up and that's how you can compare your data lap versus reference lap. Now sometimes you don't even want to look at that, so you can turn off looking at the reference lap. You can turn it off entirely. You can be just looking at the data lap. And you can do the same thing um, in terms of reference lap. Now one other thing that is worth looking at is that let's say I want to compare my best lap, which we think is over here, okay, um, the 107.582, and we're going to compare it to the best lap that another driver has drove or, or driven. And this is the Gary Verve one, and he's at a 103.622. So we're going to compare these two laps, and we'll go back to the driver tab, and you'll notice that the driver that there's only two um, that here there's. Uh, um, You've got the steering signal, and you've got your speed signal. Uh, but if we go and we plot the brakes or the throttle, you'll notice it's only saying, hey, we only have brake and throttle for the reference. And the reason that is, is that if we come back to the data sources, we've picked a non-session driver driver, a driver who's not you. And f there's very limited data available for each of those drivers. But what you do get is speed, gear, um, RPM, and steering wheel position and we use those to display to update the data lap which uh, the, the other drivers is on a data lap you can see we only show the steering wheel and the gear that's all we've got and whereas for the reference lap we're showing the steering wheel the gear and the throttle and the brake position so if uh, as you move things across you can kind of see where the throttle is being picked up but one of the nice things is, is you can actually see where that driver is turning in compared to where you're turning in and how how aggressively are they turning in um, given the 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 particular corner that you're looking at and you can also see and you can see that I'm losing time to this guy all over the racetrack I'm not even in his league um, and I'm just always always losing time because his lap is the data lap and so that's kind of a quick overview of how you can compare the driver lap and the and the reference lap or, or the driver lap reference source or the data data source or the, or the data lap um, and it's an introduction to all the tools oh one other thing to note is that notice there's no setup or export lap buttons available for other drivers because we don't have that information available to us Anyway, I hope that that's been a useful introduction to data sources and, and, and how to use them, um, at least introductorily as, as to uh, the driver's tab at least, uh, and look forward to seeing you on the racetrack.